by her best friends because they didn't like her. Hi, I'm Ethan, and I am starting this podcast because I want to talk about interesting disappearance cases and murder cases that happened in high school. And just to make sure everyone's aware, this is all by the research that was on the internet, and I mean no disrespect to the families or the victims when I tell their stories. So I just wanted to make that very clear. But Skylar Niece was a very nice girl. Um, as it says here, she cared about her grades. She cared about her friends. She had a beautiful um, relationship with her parents. She was the only child. Her parents loved her with everything they had. Um, they were. She was their first child, so... You know, she was her own, their only focus, and, you know. But her life tragically ended on July 6th, 2012, when her two best friends, or people she thought were their best, were her best friends, Sheila, Eddie, and Rachel, killed her because they didn't like her. I know you might be thinking, why in the heck would two best friends kill her best friend? That's what we're going to get down to. The day it happened and the events leading up to it. Stay tuned. Get some popcorn because this is a wild ride. When I first read about this case, I was shocked and flabbergasted that this was a planned murder. They got all the materials, drove Skylar out in the woods, counted to three, and stabbed her. And her last words on this earth was, why? Why, why, why? And their reason was because they didn't like her. I don't care. There's always going to be petty drama in high school, but that doesn't mean that you need to kill someone. Like, Skylar should, should still be alive today. She had so much going for her. She had so much to live for. Her parents left her. Her family left her. And all of that was just stripped away. And the funny thing is, Rachel had the audacity to apologize in court in front of the parents. And of course the parents, which I need to give the parents a round of applause to not accept the apology. They said she can take that apology and sit on it because that was, see, it did not seem genuine. She's crying now because she realizes that her actions had consequences. She should have realized that when she did it, that they really think they were going to get away with it. And the funny thing is, this was in 2012. So, social media it was not as big as it is now. But Sheila literally tweets the day that she finds out about her or finds out you know I roll you know literally rolling my eyes she literally acts like she didn't know she literally goes on twitter and it's like rest in peace Skylar you'll always be my best friend like imagine being so fake that you have the audacity to go to your best friend's house that you killed and you're crying on her bed with her mother like what the heck like I normally don't call people bad people like I try to see like everyone has good in them but it's really hard for me to see the good 
and Sheila and Rachel because they're murderers and that is just inexcusable. You don't take someone's life away because you don't like them. That is a stupid and petty reason and they're literally in jail as we speak and I really hope they have a horrible time and literally their updated mugshots came in and they're literally smiling and I'm just like how are you gonna smile you literally killed someone so I really don't understand how you can sit there cry in court cry in front of the parents and then smile in your updated mugshots Rachel was known for being an actress she wanted to be an actress she wanted to be on Broadway, and she really didn't need to use those acting skills in court because, wow, 10 out of 10 acting skills because I almost felt bad for her, but then I'm like, no, because she's a murderer, and you don't feel bad for murderers, point blank, period. It's a few days later, and I'm finishing up the last part of the podcast so yeah that's why i'm in a new outfit but let's get on with it and action <laughs> so what do we learn from all of this do you trust your friends do you not i definitely would suggest trusting your friends but i feel like if your parents feel a little bit off or if you feel off about your friends, listen to your instincts. Listen to what your gut and your mind and your parents are telling you because they could save you from not as bad as, you know, a story like this, but from dealing with petty, te toxic drama. And it's just not worth it, especially in high school. There's people have longer lives than just high school like there's more than high school and yeah so it's not worth 